How's Dad? Oh, not much improvement. Well, you know what your father's like. Yeah, but he's always like that, Mum, you know. He's mad. Well, Craig, I'm afraid this time there has been rather a turn for the worse. Well, how do you mean? Well, he's... He's... What? He's gone all normal. Dad? Yes. Normal? Yeah. <laughs> of all people. How bad is it? Very bad. You mean... He's jogging. Dad? Jogging? No, it's impossible. He needs oxygen after watching a Staminade commercial. <laughs> Jogging? You sure it's not the trots? Oh. <laughs> that is not the sort of thing I'd expect to hear from a young student doctor. Heaven knows you've got enough trouble in the family with your father. First he's jogging, now he's sleeping with Neville. Hey. <laughs> he's sleeping with Neville? Our Neville? Yes, I'm afraid so. But Neville's a concrete Aboriginal. I mean, why would Dad want to sleep with a concrete Aboriginal? I don't know, Craig. The marriage counsellor's baffled too. Yeah, but... Oh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, Neville's solid concrete. The bed had collapsed. Oh, you're <laughs> sensible. I wouldn't have Neville in my bed, no matter how long he's been in the family. Oh, your father's taken to sleeping out on the lawn with him. When? At night. But why? Because he's tired. Mm. Oh, goodness, now look what's happened. All these pillowcases have gone cold. Knew there was something wrong with them at that price. Yeah, no, Mum, Mum, forget the pillowcases. <laughs> now, just sit down and tell me what's going on. I don't know, Craig, and all your father will say is it's a surprise. It certainly is. What are the neighbours going to think? Yesterday, the milkman tripped over him, and this morning, when I went out there, he was swearing and groaning and rolling round and round the lawn. Why? The zipper on his sleeping bag got jammed <laughs> and then he missed his train because the primer stove wouldn't start in the rain primer stove i don't believe it he's turned into a leyland brother i can just see it the combi van you're not taking the combi van i just greased the goanna <laughs> don't make fun of your father you're sounding like a neighbor oh. There's your father now. Yeah, it's a nasty coffee he's got. <laughs> That's Jack, the three-legged foxy from next door. Always gives your father a nice big welcome. Get out of it, you bloody animal! <laughs> oh. Someone should blow that animal up. Look, Mum, it's the Iron Man of Wombat Crescent. <laughs> He's gone all rusty. What are you doing here? Nothing. Good, get out. Oh, Jim, that's no way to speak to your only son. Yeah, you're right, Phil, I'm sorry. Get out, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Don't you dad me, boy, I'm your father. How was your run, dear? Bloody shambles, of course. The whole world's plotting against me, as usual. Oh, dear, what happened this time? Well, there I was, Phil, making the best time ever. The corner of Namajira Drive in two minutes flat. It's only 50 yards. <laughs> by, by bus, it's only 50 yards. By foot, it's bloody miles. <laughs> oh, it is. It'd be at least a mile and a kilometre long. Anyway, there I am, thundering around the S Benz and Gallipoli well, Avenue. Ted, it would only be 50 yards, because there's only three letterboxes between us and the court. Listen, woman, who's doing this racing? I'm sorry. Yeah, quite right. Anyway, there I am, Phil, thundering around the S Benz and Gallipoli Avenue. Yeah, with a sort of control drift. Me sand shoes just lifting the dust on the edge of the concrete. I was poetry in motion, Phil. In a brilliant manoeuvre, I take Mr Whippy under brakes at the preschool crossing. <laughs> and then I'm bounding down Goolagrong Road. And then suddenly, whack! I'm flat on me face on the nature strip. <laughs> what happened? The elastic in me shorts went. <laughs> What are you talking about, woman? Here I am flat on my face with a broken neck and you're rabbiting on about underdacks. Did you hurt yourself? Didn't feel a thing. Why not? Because he landed on his head. <laughs> Watch it, mate. Anyway, I come to and I, I look around and I see 20 of those horrible little mick midgets standing around shouting, do it again, do it again. <laughs> I'll do them one day. What happened? 
Well, I managed to grab one of them. Geez, they're, they're greasy, those little tykes, you know. No matter how tight I pulled it, he still managed to wriggle his head out of his tie. You didn't try to strangle him. Oh, of course not. I was just gently borrowing his tie to hitch up me shorts. <laughs> Never mind, Ted. Why don't you go and relax in a nice long bath? Yeah, good idea, Phil. Thanks. I'll bring some buckets of hot water. Thanks, Phil. Oh, this time, no more radox. It makes the goldfish crook. He's taking fish into the bath? Well, Craig, that, that, that's, that's one more thing. Since he went all funny, he's not using the bath anymore. Well, where's he wash? In the goldfish pond. <laughs> Now, Craig, you've got everything. Yep. No, you haven't. Hey? Eh? Craig, I don't want to appear nosy or indelicate, right. but why aren't you wearing pyjamas? Because I'm going to catch a bus in a minute. <laughs> you know what I am speaking of. In your laundry, I haven't seen one pair of pyjamas yet. And when you moved into that flat with Wendy, I deliberately gave you three pairs. Why don't you wear them? Yes, well, uh, it's a very hot flat. <laughs> and they don't fit me. But what about Wendy? Don't fit her either. <laughs> I thought I'd brought you up properly. Now, is that a nice thing to do? It's very nice, Mum. <laughs> Yay! Bye, Mum! Oh, thank God. Oh. Bye, Mum. Craig. Bye, Craig. Bye, Bruno. Bye, Bruno. Yeah, Thanks. see you, mate. It was wonderful. We must do it again sometime. Could we, Bruno? Could we, Chris? Thank you very much, both of you, for coming over in our hour of crises. Mrs B, what choice did I have? A, a quiet, calm evening at home in front of my favourite television show, or B, a few hours of chaos and crisis with my in-laws. What did I choose? I chose what any man would do. But Greek made me come anyway. <laughs> very funny. Bruno's joking, Mum. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yes, I are. <laughs> I'll make a cup of tea, Mum, while you fill me in on the latest. Uh, we Mrs B, before you take two hours telling Greek, tell me, in sentences of one syllable, is Ted still off his rocker? Yes. And have you called the doctor? Yes. Right, everything's under control. Come on, darling, let's go home. Oh, Bruno, you <laughs> promised. All right, I'll stay and talk to Grumble Bum. Oh, well, just a tip, Bruno. I haven't told Ted that the doctor's coming. Wh why not? Well, you know what he's like. So we've all got to pretend that it's just a social call. <laughs> oh, sure, I can just see that. Hi, I'm a doctor. Just passing by with an empty straitjacket, thought I'd pop in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. G'day. Oh, big grandmother! Give my man a heart attack! How dare you sneak around on my carpet? I wasn't sneaky. You were. You all wog sneak. You ooze around with brill cream on your shoes. <laughs> what are you reading? Nothing. All right, what are you sitting on? You want to know what I'm sitting on, do you? Yeah. What I'm sitting on, my dear little import, is what we white men call a chair. <laughs> when you sit down, it stops you from falling over. <laughs> yeah, sure, Ted. <yeah. laughs> hey, give me back that. That's mine. Hey, what's this? Hey, Welcome I... to Wealth. The Young Millionaire's Guide to Manipulate... Give us that back or I'll call the cops. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> the Young Millionaire's Guide to Manipulating the Gold Market. Oh, Turtles, you've started reading golden books at last. <laughs> <laughs> Give me back my book. Uh, young Millionaire? You? Geez, you must have put in some overtime this week. Watch it, Wog. <laughs> Ted, what's all this about? What? Yeah, jogging, sleeping on the lawn, reading rich books. What are you up to? You want to know what I'm up to? Yeah. I'm up to here with you, sneaking around and spitting out your spaghetti seeds all over my lawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. Stop that. Yeah, yeah sure, Ted. Oh, strike me, Kathy. Can't a man have any peace? Wogs and doorbells leaping all around the house. Oh, all right. I'm coming, I'm coming. Thelma, answer the door. <laughs> coming, Ted. Wouldn't it be funny if it was a doctor? Bloody hilarious. <laughs> Stupid woman. Oh, look, Ted, what a surprise we never expected. It's Dr. Hemingway. Oh. Where? Oh. <laughs> Here. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Mrs. Bullpit. 
Oh, heavens, not so formal. You are in our home. You must call me Thelma. <laughs> um, thank you, Thelma. And what should I call you? Doctor. <laughs> what are you doing here, woman? I'm your wife, Ted. <laughs> not you, her. Well, I came to see you, didn't I? Oh, but really more of a social call. I mean, you, you, you just popped in, didn't you, Doctor? <laughs> Did I? Yes, I heard your car pop outside. And, well, I'll go and put the kettle on. Oh, no, please don't bother. Oh, it's no trouble. It's no trouble. The tap is just full of water. <laughs> Do you like yours jiggled or dangled? Oh, black with lemon, thank you. Lemon? Oh, how posh. <laughs> All right, what do you want? Well, Mr. Bullpick, whatever your wife may have said, I'm here on a house call. The house is fine. Now rack off. <laughs> I am here to see you. Oh, you mean to perv on me? <laughs> I would rather perv on Billy McMahon. Now, please, take your clothes off. All oh, right. Well, I'll be off. I'll see you later. I'll leave you two alone. Oh, where are you going? What? Uh, sit. Stay. <laughs> I'd be embarrassed. Oh, no, no, no. Go on, go on. Go on, Brune. Please, stay, Brune, mate. Well, no thanks, Ted, mate. <laughs> oh, go on, Brune, mate. He can stay, can't he? I mean, uh, why don't you examine him? Why? Well, because he's most rare case. I mean, he's got one of them fully imported brains, you know. <laughs> Only drives the left side of his head. <laughs> Pulpit, I need to see you alone. See oh. you later, Ted. <laughs> That'd be right. First sign of strife and your wogs start running. <laughs> they didn't need a gun during the war, just a starting pistol. <laughs> Mr. Bullpit, your wife is very worried. Oh, well, what are you standing there for? Give her a pill. <laughs> she is worried about you. Why? There's nothing wrong with me. Then why are you sleeping with a concrete Aboriginal? I'm in training. What for, Wimbledon? No, no, no. Neville holds up me tent with his spear. What for? For nothing. He's a good mate. <laughs> At least he's not plotting against me like the rest of the world. Mr. Bullpit, no one is plotting against you. Now you can trust me. Go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Whatever we talk about is absolutely confidential. It's privileged information, you know, like you would, like you would speak to a priest or the taxation department. Uh, are you mad woman? I wouldn't talk to either of them. <laughs> I'm not loony, you know. Ah, ah, now we're getting somewhere. Now, what makes you think you're not loony, um, disturbed? I can prove it. I've got this piece of paper. Oh, yes. Neville signed it, I suppose. <laughs> God, it's hard. Look. It's a map. Of course it's a map. What do you think it was? Captain Cook's driving licence? <laughs> Mr. Bullpit, I don't understand. Tea's up. I'm sorry, I didn't have any lemon to put in your tea. Oh, that's quite all right, Thelma. So I gave you Bonox. Oh, no, you shouldn't have. <laughs> oh, no, no, I really mean you shouldn't have. You see, I am allergic to Bonox. Oh. Isn't that a coincidence? We had a budgie that was allergic to Bonox. <laughs> well, sort of. He fell in a cup of it and drowned. <laughs> Will you be quiet, woman? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, what lovely colouring in tea. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Did he do it right, Doctor? Did he pass? It's a map, Thelma. Mr. Bullpit. I think it's about time that you told me what is going on. Oh, all right, all right. It's about time I had some peace at any price. Wogs and bonocks, doctors and doorbells, tarry hooting around the place. No wonder a bloke feels like the call of the wild. Up the hall first oh, on the left. But you stop that. Watch it, mate. But, Ted, what's the map for? It's for getting rich with, Thelma. It belonged to me old Uncle Jack, you see, so that's why the past uh, few weeks I've been training me body and me mind so I can go out in the wilderness for months if necessary. Preferably a weekend, and find Uncle Jack's lost company. <laughs> it's the legendary bull pit load. He's right, you know. It's the biggest load of bull pit I've ever seen. <laughs> Mr. 
Well, you've done it this time, Ted. We're lost. Shut up. And you've created history, the first inland shipwreck. <laughs> it wasn't my fault there was no waterfall marked on my map. Well, couldn't you hear it? How could I about the roar of the outboard? The outboard was dead. We'd run out of petrol hours before that because a certain Captain Bly forgot to load the extra jerry can. We were drifting out of control. Well, I don't know why I didn't hear the falls. There was a terrible noise distracting me. That was you, screaming. <laughs> well, I nearly saved us. Don't forget I was the one who chucked the anchor overboard. You're supposed to tie it to the rope first. <laughs> Have you got that fire going yet? The matches are wet. Well, come on, gulp a little. Rub two sticks together. I want to keep warm while you're diving for the food. Look, I'm not going in back in there. The sandwiches will be all soggy. And look what happened to the lamington in my shirt pocket. <laughs> God, you're useless. Listen, I didn't want you to come on this expedition in the first place. I didn't want to come. They made me come to look after you. Don't try and kid me, Major, after my gold. Why would I want your filthy gold? So you can send it back to Italy so all your spivvy relations can put it in their teeth. <laughs> And lair eyes around Rome, grinning at the tourists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. Yeah, no, no, no. I'll say that. Where are you going? Mind your business. I'm going to see a man about a dog. <laughs> well, if it's a guide dog, see if you can borrow it to help us out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't do it in the river. All right, all right, all right. What are you looking at? Nothing. You are. You're looking at me. I'm not. Can't a man have any privacy around here? Now go on, turn your face around. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Oh, for heaven's sake, there's something terribly wrong with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, put it in the <laughs> It's a bunyip. There's no such thing. Well, it's a, it's a horse in the tree there. Horses can't climb trees. Well, it's a, it's a possum. It, it, it's huge. It's eating a leg of lamb. Quick. Well, you can't well, There's no such thing as a lamb eating possum. I'm getting out of here. Well, where are you going? I'm going somewhere. I'm going to get lost. We're already lost. I'm going to get lost in a safer place. Will you calm down and tell me where it is? It's, it's over there, over there. Well, where, where? There, there. Don't get too close. It'll tear your throat out. There's nothing here. It, it probably fainted when it saw you screaming at it. Well, there was just something there a minute ago. Well, where? There. Good evening. <laughs> towards favouring over there. You mean you're lost? Um, no, not in quite so many words. I've just um, misplaced something. What? A jamboree. <laughs> you know, the sort of thing, hundreds of little people running around in shorts shouting, Mummy, Daddy, Funnel, Web, Tourniquet, all that sort of thing. You mean Boy Scouts? Uh, that's it. That's absolutely it. Have you seen any around? Oh, how many were there? Mm, give or take on oh, 1,500. <laughs> what do you mean you've lost 1,500 Boy Scouts? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, how long have you been wandering around out there? Oh, not very long. What month is it? <laughs> March. Oh, yes. Well, then I might as well pack it in. They would have... They would have opened their Christmas presents by now and gone. <laughs> God, are you from full quid? Have you escaped from somewhere? How dare you, sir? I've had men's woggles for less than that. <laughs> there is a... There is one other priority that you might be able to help me with. What? Food. Got me food. No. Oh. Well, then I suppose uh, another raw yam or two won't hurt. <laughs> Talk about roughage and fibre in the dirt. Straight <laughs> <laughs> through. Mm. No wonder the Aboriginals were nomadic. Listen, I don't believe this. 
We're stuck out here in the middle of the mulga. Oh. No food. Oh. Shouldn't we be doing something about it? What? Good question. And very well put. <laughs> um, do you mind if, uh, do you mind if I just uh, ask you something? Uh, who's Mel and who's Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us. Harry Butler? No. <laughs> uh, there wouldn't be a, a Rolf Harris among you, I suppose. <laughs> no. You're, uh, you are Australian, aren't you? I am. He's from Grasby Land. <laughs> There's no matter enough of this. One of us has got to go out of here and get help. Uh, yeah, well, right, oh, you go on. Go on, go on, out you go. I'll stay behind and cook Rupert's yams. Oh, <laughs> right, you two sleep here, in the tent. Oh, yeah. Don't move till I come back. All right, right Ted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be back in the morning, oh! OK, Rupert? Yes, yes, yes. Anything, anything, anything you say. <laughs> now, let me see. Which one is the North Star? Oh, I think I can help you there, Mr. Grasby. If some... <laughs> I read him and I saw it a moment ago. Oh, yes, there it is up there. The one that my compass is pointing at. Give me that! Oh. <laughs> Touch aggressive, isn't it? Yeah, well, your typical wog. Put them under pressure and they'll crack. Uh, <laughs> well, look at Al Alamein. Who? Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I see. Um, <clears throat> would you um, care for one of these? Oh, thanks very much. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, mmm. Mm. Very decent of you. Mmm. 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 Very nice. Mmm. What was it? Witchetty grub. Oh! <laughs>